everyone and welcome to the tree house. Today we are going to be celebrating all things fall, which is one of my favorite times of year because all the leaves are changing. We get some fall vegetables and fruits coming out like apples and squash. And then we get to visit and explore all that nature has to offer, like all the animals coming out. Now we have some exciting things that we are going to be doing this episode. So we're going to go ahead and check it out. I'm at the Nature Center and we're going to meet a new friend of mine. So I would like to introduce you to Lizzie. Now Lizzie, can you tell us what you do here? Yeah, hi everybody, my name is Lizzie and I'm the new Nature Center coordinator and I oversee all of the really cool things that we do here at the Burgess Shadbush Nature Center. We're here and there's a lot of animals around us. So I have to first start off with, do you like animals? Um, I love animals and I've been working with animals for a very long time and I'm very excited to be here. We have lots of turtles and reptiles and amphibians here which um, are just super cool to learn about. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grow up? When I was in second grade, I decided I wanted to be a zookeeper. And Pretty it, similar. Yeah, and it was awesome. I have been a zookeeper and I learned that not only do I like to work with animals but also people. So I went into education. So now I get to just talk to people about animals all day long and it's awesome. I love when people sometimes start off kind of scared of animals. Some of my friends, like snakes, can be a little scary to people who aren't used to being around them. Um, and when they get to meet my snake friends or animal friends and they get to realize that, oh, these, cool, these guys are cool, they're helpful in the environment. Um, and then I just love that part of it when it kind of all clicks in there and then they walk away loving the animals. What else might we have here at the Nature Center? Yeah, we have um, snakes, turtles, frogs, toads. So it's very cool, um, lots to see and learn about. Out of what we have here, what would you say might be your favorite? Oh, it's so hard to pick a favorite, but I think I'd have to say it's Mocha, and Mocha is a ball python. Can we meet Mocha? Yeah, let's meet Mocha. She's, I'm excited. Yeah, she's awesome. Okay. So she is hiding inside her little hide right now. Um, she's warm and cozy in there, so I'm gonna get her out. She's already kind of peeking out. She knows. She does know. Hi, good afternoon. Just gonna move this and I'll put everything back so that she can be all cozy in bed again. Just gonna let her know that I'm about to pick her up. Oh, lovely. Okay. And I just really enjoy ball pythons. Their, their size, they're very curious. Yeah, they're um, really relaxed snakes as well. Um, and so while they are not native to Michigan, and we do have a lot of really awesome snake species here, um, I just think ball pythons, I just really connect with them. Do you find that when people come to the Nature Center, Mocha's a pretty big hit? Or you said that some people might be scared of snakes too, right? Yeah. So because Mocha is a rather large snake, um, a lot of people are terrified of her, which then I can bring her out and they can see that she's really calm. She doesn't want to chase anyone or bite anyone. Super friendly. Yeah. Definitely exploring all around too. Yeah, you can see as her tongue sticks out, she's actually sniffing the air with her tongue, which is really weird. Um, That's amazing, I didn't know that. Yeah, so she's kind of just sniffing us right now. Would you like to touch her? Is there a certain way I should touch her? Thank you for asking. You're gonna take two fingers, go just along her scales. If you were to go against her scales, that could be really uncomfortable for her. Now I've heard before not to touch or pet the top of a snake's head. Is that true? Yeah, well just like any person even, I don't really like when strangers come up and touch my face. Yeah. Um, and so, just nice to give um, snakes or really any animal space. And now I have to say, super smooth and not scary at all. Right? Yeah. Thanks, Mocha. It was nice to meet you. <laughs> Mocha, you ready to go back to bed? I think so.
Now I see Mocha has a light. Is that to keep Mocha warm? Yeah. So Mocha is a snake and they are cold blooded. So unlike you and me um, that are warm blooded, which requires a lot of energy, right? We have to eat like every day, multiple meals even. Snakes only have to eat once a month because they're cold blooded. So they don't really make their own energy. They get energy um, from other warm sources. And so that is a heat lamp and that keeps her extra warm and cozy. Hello everyone, are we ready to do some signing today? You are perfect. Well, we are going to be learning all about numbers today. That's probably something you know, right? Maybe from school, maybe you have some counting books. Well, we are going to be counting together using sign language. So the first thing we are going to be learning today is the word for numbers. This one is pretty easy. All it takes is both of our hands, so we'll get our hands ready. And then we are going to take both of our hands and almost make them into claws. So we're gonna close our claws, and you see how there's a little oval right here? We want it to be just like this. So what we're going to do to do the sign for numbers now that we have our hands ready, is just we're going to go back and forth. Do you see how I'm turning my hands like this? So they're going in opposite directions. So we tap the top of our fingers together, back and forth, and this is the sign for numbers. Do you want to try it with me? All right, so let's get our hands ready together. Then we're going to make our claws close them on up. Then we're going to move our hands back and forth and tap our fingers together. Now we have some numbers. Let's do it one more time together to make sure we got it right. And then we're going to move on and learn how to count to 10 in sign language. So let's get our hands ready, our claws ready, and go back and forth. You are amazing at signing numbers. Are you sure you haven't done this before? All right, now it's time for us to learn how to count to 10. So what number do you think we're going to start with first? That's right, the number one. So what we have to do for the numbers one through five is have our palm, so this side of our hand, face us. Now I'm gonna have this side of my hand face you. Sound good? So what we have to do for number one is our first pointer finger right here. And this is just the sign for number one. Pretty easy, right? Now I think you can do this too. Now make sure your palm is facing you. You put down these fingers, they're gonna take a little bit of a nap. Say goodnight to Mr. Thumb and we have the number one. Do you think you can do it with me too? I knew you could. Let's go ahead, we'll get our hand out. Move these fingers down. Now we have the number one. Very good. Now I bet you know what's going to come next, right? That's right, the number two. Okay, so just like we have the one, now we're going to add one more, which is its friend right next to it. Now we have two. Now do you wanna try it with me? Perfect, so we'll bring our hand up, we can make the one, and then we're adding a two right here, making sure our palm is still facing us. You are pretty good at this and pretty good at counting. Now this one can be a little bit different than what we're used to, and that's the number three. You're probably used to holding up your fingers just like this when you want to say three. Now in sign language, we can't do that. And the reason for that is because this is already a sign. It's the sign for the letter W. Do you see how my fingers make the letter W like this? So I can't say W and three at the same time. So the ASL sign for three is using your thumb instead. So we have our middle, pointer, and then our thumb. And this is three. Do you want to try this one with me? It might be a little new to you. So make sure your palm is facing you. Then we have these two fingers go down and we have our middle, pointer, and thumb. And this is the number three. I think this might be one of my favorite signs because it's a little different. 
Now we're going to go ahead and move on to four. Now this is probably one you're used to doing. We lift our hand up, this thumb goes to sleep, and now we have our four fingers right here. This is the sign for four. Can you do that with me? I knew you got the hang of this. We'll have the thumb go down just like this, and then flip it like that, and we have four. That is the sign for the number four. Now, I bet you can't guess what five looks like. That's right, it's just our hand up like this because we have one, two, three, four, and five fingers on our hand. So it's a pretty easy sign for us to do. But we gotta make sure that our hand isn't like this, that it's flipped like this still. So all you have to do if you wanna do it with me, the number five, just like this. Now we're going to be moving on to six through 10. Now we had our hands facing this way, my palm to me and the back of my hand to you. Now what do you think we're going to do this time? That's right, we're going to flip it. So my palm is going to be facing you and then the back of my hand will face me because we need to cross our fingers together for the rest of the signs. So for the sign for the number six, we take our pinky and our thumb and they meet together. And this is the sign for six. So what we'll do again is take the pinky and the thumb, bring them together and hold it just like this. So we have our three other fingers sticking right up there. Do you wanna try it with me? Okay, here we go. My palm is to you and the back of my hand is to me. And then we take our pinky here and our thumb and we put them together. And now we have six. Now you might be thinking, that looks a little strange. Why would we do it that way? Well, let's think about maybe what the number seven is going to look like. So for the number seven, we bring our hand back up facing the same way. And we had six like this. And just like when we count with our fingers, one, two, three, four, five, we're going to do the same thing with sign language. So we're going to take our thumb and now go to the second finger here. So this was six, now we have seven. So this is the sign for seven. We have our pinky up and now our ring finger down and our other two up and our thumb down. Now we have seven. Do you wanna try it with me? Okay, so you had the hang of number six, so you have to have the hang of number seven. So palm facing outwards and then together like this. Very good. Now if we have six, and seven, we need eight. And what finger do you think is going to touch the thumb? That's right, we're gonna go to the middle now. So we have six, seven, and now it's time for eight. So we have the sign for eight. Do you wanna try it with me? All right, here we go. Eight. Very good. Now we have six, seven, eight, what do you think is going to come next? That's right, nine. Now we have one last finger that's going to be touching our thumb. So we're going to take our pointer and our thumb and put it together just like this. And now we have the number nine. Now, do you think you can do that with me? All right, here we go. Just put them together. It's kind of like doing a little pinch. Now, we see that we have six, seven, eight, Nine, kind of run out of fingers, haven't I? That's when we just have the thumb for the number 10. Since I ran out of these other ones, this is going to be the number 10. All we have to do is stick up our thumb like this, like you're giving a thumbs up, and then shake it. This is the number 10. Do you think you can do that for me? You can? Well, I bet you'd give a thumbs up a lot, right? So we can go ahead and thumbs up and shake it. And this is the number 10. Very good. Now I cannot wait to see you again and see all the counting you have done. So make sure that you practice and I'll see you next time.
Now, we've met Mocha. Who else should we meet? Let's see. We have Colonel the Corn Snake. We have Serge the Crested Gecko. Uh, Leona the Leopard Gecko. We have Salamander. This is Ponder. She is an Asian yellow pond turtle. She is basking right now, as you might see a lot of turtles in the wild would do that. Another cold-blooded animal could just be digesting, could just be relaxing. Turtles also need UVB light, so that's um, basically like sunlight that comes in. In order to make sure Ponder and all of our turtles are healthy, she needs to spend time under her UVB light. That makes total sense, because that's why we need to go outside and play so we can get that sunlight too. So I completely understand. We're kind of like turtles, I guess. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Now there's one more turtle that we have to meet, right? Absolutely. This is Compact and she is a painted turtle. These are a swimming type of turtle. We also have box turtles um, in Michigan. They have big dome shells and they don't really spend too much time swimming. But you can see that Compact has this really flat shell, perfect for swimming. Long toes that are really good. You know, like when you go in the water and you stick your hands out flat, you can swim a lot better than when you hold your hands in a bag. Is that what you do? Yeah, so you can tell that Compact is aquatic turtle. And these are really common out in the wild. A lot of people sometimes take turtles from the wild, which we don't recommend and in some cases is illegal. We recommend that if you find a turtle in the wild, you can pick them up, you can look at them, respect their space so you don't want to touch their face or anything, and then just put them back so that they can live a really good, happy life out in the environment. I also think that's a way for us to share them, right? Because yeah. then somebody else gets to come and find the turtle as well. And if anyone ever does touch a turtle, you want to make sure you wash your hands. They can carry germs that can make humans sick. Now she usually lives in her pond that we are fixing right now, but anyone can visit us Wednesday through Sundays and come and meet all these animal friends. Thank you for showing us, I think, all my new friends. Absolutely. We have turtles and geckos, so we can come here and visit Lizzie and visit all of the animals like Mocha. Make sure you come and check it out. Hello everyone and welcome to Craft Corner. Now we have a very special craft on our hands today because every time you visit me here in the treehouse, you become an explorer. And what does an explorer need? They need some binoculars. So that's what we're making together today. We only need a few things to put together our extra special binoculars so that you can go exploring at home on your own. So what we need in order to kick it off is to have two uh, toilet paper rolls. So you see how they are the same height. And when we put them together, then we can go ahead and see. So what I need to do is to tape these first together. So I'm going to take a little bit of tape and have it go right across. I'm gonna lay them down to make it a little bit easier on myself. And it might take a few strips of tape, both on the front, and then we're gonna flip it over to the other side. And don't worry about how it looks because we are going to be covering that all up with some lovely decorations. Now I'm excited for us to see how our binoculars turn out because I want to do some exploring to find all of the animals I can find today. Now it's time for our second step. Okay, so now I am going to be taking a piece of construction paper. It can be any color you want, and this is going to wrap around our binoculars so it covers up our tape, okay? So all we need to do is cut out a strip that's going to cover enough of our roll. So it looks like if we just fold this our good old hot dog style, 
and then cut along our little line. It should be the perfect size. All right, so you know what to do. We're going to take our scissors, and if we need help right now, all we have to do is ask a grown-up that's nearby, and we're going to cut along the edge. And like I said, you can choose any color, whatever your favorite color is, too. One of my favorite colors is definitely purple. Okay, so now we have one half, and it's just going to go ahead and wrap around our binoculars. So it looks like we can take it around and actually cut off a little bit for us. There we go. And I'm gonna meet both pieces right in the middle so that I can tape these together. And this is going to be at the bottom of my binoculars, so no one's gonna see. So we'll take a little bit of tape, and this time I'm going to do it right along the line, just like so. And we're gonna press it on there, and voila! We now have our first and second step all finished of our binoculars. All right, now that we have our paper covering, our two rolls down here to make our binoculars, we get to start with my favorite step now, which is decorating. Since we'll be exploring outside, I thought it would be only right if we cover it with some leaves. Now we're going to be making our leaves out of some tissue paper. I have yellow, blue, and green, but you can choose to use construction paper too, or even draw them onto yours. And if you have stickers, that might even be really cool too. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut out almost a diamond shape, but it's gonna be longer, and it's gonna curve around just like a big leaf. And it's gonna be pointy on either side. So now we have one, and I'm gonna put it right onto there. And we're going to need our handy dandy glue stick once again. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna put my paper right down here flat and make sure I cover it with some glue. And we're going to press it on together. Now we can put it anywhere because I'm gonna put a couple different ones down to really cover it up. I already cut out some, so I have yellow coming back. So we'll have some yellow here. And we can lay them just about anywhere. We get to have some fun with how we put all of these on. I have another green one right here. And then if you're using the tissue paper, we have to be pretty gentle so we don't rip it. It's kind of like when you pick up leaves out from outside, right? We have to be nice and gentle with them because we don't want to tear them at all. Ooh, I have a blue one here. Let's throw that right at the bottom. Mix it up. And it looks like I have one last yellow one. We can't forget one. Absolutely not. We'll go ahead and we'll put that right across at the top. It'll peek over a little bit. And now we've decorated it. Now we only have to do one to two more steps. So we're going to go ahead and add some holes next and see where we go. All right, so now that we have our decorations on there, I'm going to take a pencil. And I'm going to take a pencil and draw a little bit of a dot on one side, giving myself some space. I'm gonna do it right on the other side too so you can see. And the reason why I'm putting these dots on either side is because we're going to now use this pencil and poke a hole through so that we can have some string because we want our binoculars to be right up top, but also have a string to go around so that when we're not exploring, it can just hang around. All right, now we have to be very careful. I'm using a pencil to poke through, so make sure that your fingers aren't anywhere near the hole, and we're going to press through. Now, if you need a grown-up's help, make sure you stop and you ask, okay? And we're gonna push, push, push. And I heard it pop through, so we have our first hole. And then I'm gonna flip it to the other side and do just the same. Make sure our fingers are nowhere near where we're going to push, push, push. 
and it went right through. Now we have our two holes on our opposite sides. And I have some ribbon and some twine, but I think I'm going to use some twine. And we're going to go ahead and push our twine straight through our hole here. And it went right through and we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna tie one little knot right here. So how I do it is I have the two pieces cross, I loop it through and I pull. I think it might need one more just to be safe. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to loop it, pull right through, and then make sure it's nice and tight. I'm gonna switch to the opposite side. So I have my twine right here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and push the twine through the hole that we made. It went right in. I'm gonna pull a little bit through and do the same, where I'm going to take my twine, loop it through the hole, and pull. And one more time to make sure it's on there nice and tight. And we're gonna pull, pull, pull. Oh my goodness me, look what we made together. Our very own binoculars. Now I'm going to put my string right across. All right, and now we have our binoculars. I have mine all the way around me and you will have one too, and you get to go out and explore. So make sure you come back and tell me all of the cool plants and animals you see when you're out on your adventure. Until next time, have some fun. Bye. everyone now it's time for us to wrap up this episode but before we do I want to thank you for exploring all things fall with me there's no one I would rather adventure around with so until next time play fair play nice and play together bye mm -hmm.